Okay, let's look at this problem together. So we've got water flowing um, in a multi-sectional pipe, and it's placed horizontally on the ground. Gives you the velocity, the initial velocity, and the final velocity at the exit, and it's asking for the pressure difference, the delta p, between these two different points, and you can neglect friction. Okay, so um, th there's a number of clues inside this problem. Let's just kind of take them apart. So first of all, it's a horizontal. It's horizontally on the on the ground. So what that means is delta z equals zero. So we can neg neglect gravitational contributions. And um, so we know the initial velocity is, is high, so v, if we're looking at the two different points, v1 equals 3 meters per second, and v2 uh, is 2.1 meters per second. So notice that this, the second velocity is slower than the first, so we know from the continuity equation that a1 v1 equals a2 v2, so we know that the cross-sectional area, since this is a smaller velocity, I guess we do write like this, small velocity, big velocity, we know these are constant. That means this must be a bigger area than a smaller area in the beginning. So if we were to draw this, I, I would say that this has a smaller cross-sectional area, and it is transitioning to a larger cross-sectional area at point V2. Okay, I'm just, I'm exaggerating this as well. So... Um, we know the pipe looks something like this. We know the delta Z is zero, and we're looking for the pre pressure differences. So we and we can neglect friction. Um, so let's let's uh, rewrite this, and um, we can go to a equation here that uh, we know that um, let's see P one plus one half rho V one squared equals p2 plus one-half rho v2 squared. All right, and we're dealing with water. We know the density of water. So rearranging this equation, we can get, um, we can get, uh, oh, by the way, let's, let's ask this question. Um, they're asking for the pressure, but, but notice that what they're really asking for, and this, you'll, you'll often see this, is when they ask for the pressure, they're specifically asking for the hydrostatic pressure. So the pressure really means hydrostatic pressure because that's the pressure that we can actually measure with a, um, with a, with a pressure gauge. So which one of these is going to have a higher pressure? Well, since the energy is constant, we might draw it like this. So if we, had a, uh, if we were drawing a bar graph of the energy from um, throughout the situation, the total energy we know is going to be the same uh, across uh, both these situations. So at V1, you'll have the same total energy as you have at V2. I'm kind of representing this in space, V2, and this is V1. And so you know that the velocity at uh, V1, or, or at point 1, is higher than the velocity than at point two, so there's more kinetic energy up front. So if we were kind of uh, doing a distribution of energies, we know that this one has, I don't know how much more, but this one has the kinetic energy like this, and this one has a lower kinetic energy. So we know that uh, if we're asking about the static, the hydrostatic pressure, or the, 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 pr the energy from this, um, from the pressure of the fluid itself, we can see that, that the point two will actually have a higher pressure than uh, point 0.1 because of these different velocities. So that, that just kind of sets us up um, so we know what to, to look for in the solution. So we know P2 will be greater than P1. And um, so if we rearrange this equation here, we get that P, P2 minus P1 equals 1 half rho v1 squared minus v2 squared. My iPad is not doing a very good job here. So this is what we're looking for, the delta, the change in pressure in, or the difference in pressure, not the change, but the difference in pressure across these two sections should be equal to one half rho times the, the difference in the velocity squared. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to get a new page. I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? I don't know.